Greetings, dear listeners, and welcome to the Real Context News Podcast, the fifth episode, a special dramatic reading of an article I published the day after the election on November 4th, and today is November 6th, and we'll get right to it because it seems Joe Biden is about to legitimately win this election, and Donald Trump is going to illegitimately try to undermine these results. Here is the title of my thoughts published on November 4th. To save the Republic, Trump and Trumpism must be defeated now and Biden must take office in January. This is one of the most clearly black and white, right and wrong, good versus evil moments in recent American history. Decency, truth, democracy, They are not candidates, but make no mistake, they are running and on the ballot. Trump's supporters tried surrounding a Joe Biden campaign bus on a highway in Texas to run it off the road. The president himself approvingly retweeted their horrific, reckless act. No one was hurt, but that was never a predetermined outcome on a crowded highway involving many large vehicles including a large and hard to control bus that could easily have ended up in a fatal accident. The weather could easily have been worse. It could have been at night. Any number of other factors could have been part of the equation and you would not be irresponsible for thinking such factors would not have been high on Trump's or his supporters list of concerns. Besides signaling approval of white supremacists Anti-Semites, Islamophobia, proven liars, grifters, convicted felons formerly on his staff, violent police abuse, a supporter who literally killed protesters in a riot, murderous dictators who continually spit at democracy in its face and fight its practice in their countries and abroad, QAnon conspiracy theorists, and plenty of other deplorables. Trump had amplified the messages of all of them, and the one condition is that they support him, full period, stop. This man loves power for his own sake and for power's sake, two qualities many of the founders feared with all their hearts and souls in a possible president. They even wrote a clause to the Constitution the Foreign Emoluments Clause, to keep the president from being influenced by foreign powers while in office, a clause to the Constitution which he has routinely violated and gotten away with these violations rather inexcusably. He even disparages those who serve and die for the nation in uniform. He approaches virtually everything, even sensitive foreign policy decisions, from one or more of two perspectives. If something benefits himself personally, or if something benefits himself politically. Trump has broken the system so that it still sputters along, but hardly works as intended, making our current system of government not only dysfunctional, but extra constitutional, as I noted long ago. He has literally taken a great leap forward away from democracy and towards a democratic form of fascism, which I noted shortly after Trump's inauguration one far less violent than its 20th century counterparts, but far more deceptive in its less physically aggressive ways. Patriots within the system who are not on board to move America in a sharply fascistic direction are labeled by Trump and his sheep as, quote, the deep state, end quote. But as I noted long ago, even through the failure of Congress, the media, and voters to robustly hold Trump and his minions accountable, these so-called deep staters bureaucrats and officials whose loyalty is to the Constitution and the system above any loyalty to Trump, as their oath of office requires, have heroically limited the damage of Trump's first term. But Trump would be able to whittle them down in spirit and numbers over time, and they have done about all they could up to this point. Now, it is up to us to make sure they will not be reduced to martyrs flaming out along with the rule of law and the democratic republic we have had for over two centuries. 
always flawed, but always advancing over time ever since its founding to correct many of its faults and mistakes. This is a historic chance to correct one of those mistakes, one of the worst in American history. Other than his brinksmanship towards war with nuclear powers, North Korea and Iran, nothing Trump has done has been more dangerous than his speech late last night, the night after the election. And certainly none have been more damaging to American democracy when he, as a sitting president, attacked from the White House the very concept of legally cast votes being counted and stated he would go to the U.S. Supreme Court to try to stop both votes from being counted and an American presidential election from being completed. If anything, Trump has gotten worse over time since taking office rather than the office ennobling him. He has dragged the presidency to his level and in many ways the nation along with it. And far before the coronavirus pandemic exposed Trump's America as something of a failed state. It is hard to calculate the substantive damage, not even addressing the reputational damage that Trump has done to America while in office. But it is not hard to imagine how accelerated his destruction of American democracy and American character would be in a second presidential term. And we should not give him the chance to show us, since the American Republic would not survive this. I could write a whole other article about the character and experience of Joe Biden, who is a better man than Donald Trump in every possible way, who has far better ideas and policies in every category conceivable, and who would behave presidentially in every instance when Trump has behaved unpresidentially. It is not just American democracy at stake, but democracy itself and the idea of a West worth emulating that is at risk if Trump hangs on. It seems we are entering a dark phase of legal challenges based on lies during which Trump will try to steal the election and disenfranchise thousands, maybe even millions of Americans. We must all stay engaged and demand from our leaders at every level that they stand up to this and resist. And it may come to the point where we, where we must stand up and resist the tyranny of Trump. Our republic is on the brink in ways reminiscent of the ancient Roman Republic, driven there by the crude delusional narcissism and fraud of a madman and his followers. No president has done more to undermine democracy and the rule of law, with the arguable exception of Andrew Johnson during Reconstruction, right after the Civil War. You either stand with America and democracy or with Trump and tyranny. This is not just another election with any recent presidential election, any Republican or Democrat winning would not be a risk to American democracy itself. But that is exactly where we are now. Those of you supporting Trump for whatever reason, yes, you may continue on as our family members and friends, colleagues and bosses, but this mark, this stain on your values and judgment and conception of being a citizen will never go away and we will never forget. Whatever issue or issues or sentiments drove you to support Trump, being so blind to or even accepting his wider damage, both to American institutions and to fellow Americans, make you his accomplices and neither history nor we will forgive or forget. We will remember the needlessly vastly amplified numbers of both Americans who died during the pandemic and migrant children separated from their parents at the southern border. We will remember that you put whatever narrow interests or myopic fears you had ahead of the collective good of the nation. 
and that you tolerated or even embraced behavior you would never, ever have stood for coming from the other side. You may buy some goodwill by stepping aside and declining to support the would-be tyrant's efforts to illegally stay in office after what will almost certainly be his loss once the votes are counted. But your actions have spoken for a part of your soul that we cannot ignore, but must find some way to learn to live alongside. We will go on living in the same country as you, but trusting you as fellow citizens again is not guaranteed, and only action to right some of the horrors of this era on your part will earn you respect as citizens again. For Trump, though, there is no redemption, and prison would be his only fitting next act once he is no longer in office. But for now, all that matters is this moment. The Republic must be saved, Trump defeated, Trumpism as a movement massively contained, and Biden sworn in to replace the Trumpian stain and wipe it away clean as much as is possible from the White House and the nation, though a full cleansing may not be possible for a very long time. Donald Trump is an existential threat to our democratic system as we know it, and the second term for him would be an extinction-level event for American democracy. Our republic needs saving. Let us now, during these precarious days and weeks, stay focused and ensure it does get saved. After that, let us make sure we keep it worth saving. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes my dramatic reading of my article from November 4th. You can see the whole thing and read it online with lots of links to people making detailed arguments of particular points I raise, uh, and with links to examples of Trump's absolutely deplorable behavior, specific examples. And let me just say, folks, we really can't mess around here. This is it. This is, as I wrote in my article, a lot, a lot on the line here. Decency, truth, and democracy and tyranny and fascism on the other side. And we absolutely have got to prevail. No matter what antics, no matter what Trump does, he has lost this election legitimately. And I don't care what some kind of a rigged Supreme Court or anybody else might do. We cannot tolerate any attempt to undo the results of this election. We must see Biden sworn in. Now, Something else I want to talk briefly about is, look, yeah, I read Trump supporters the Riot Act, but you know what? We do have to move forward. And I know it's hard. I know it's hard for people who have watched others that we know support kids being put in cages and separated from their parents. Who have made ridiculous excuses for the thousands and thousands of more people who have died because of the horrible leadership of this president during our worst domestic crisis since the 1918 influenza pandemic. And yes, we should not forgive or forget. Supporting this man and his policies is something that should be a stain. It should not be forgotten. But we also have to live with these people. We can't write off. We can't make persona non grata 40 something, 8%, 47% when all the votes are counted, maybe a little less. Some, at least 45% of the country. Are we going to just pretend they don't exist and write them off? We'll never succeed. We'll never get anywhere. And we'll certainly never get rid of the Electoral College or make our democratic system more representative and less favoring. Of uh, very small states with, uh, you know, very small rural populations, we're going to always be at a disadvantage if we can't work together. So it's on Trump people to really search their souls and to understand how they could possibly have tolerated or looked the other way 
with the things this man said and did, all in the name of their side and pursuing power. Because there are limits to anything, and sometimes principles really do have to matter. But we also, and I'm not saying a lot of this isn't on them, but we, we obviously have not reached these people. We haven't connected with them. I can't tell you how much pressure I've gotten from people to defriend Trump supporters in Facebook conversations and exchanges and whatnot. We cannot write, out, write off four out of ten people, four and a half out of ten people in this country. We just can't. We have got to stay engaged. We have got to be as patient as we can and not give up on these people. These are our friends, our coworkers, our family members, people we work with, people we walk down the street and see, and people who are our police officers and in the FBI and all kinds of other things. They're all of, they're everywhere. They're not people who don't exist that we can ignore. They're everywhere. And they have just as many rights as we do. So we have got to stay engaged. A pox on anybody saying that we just have to cut all these people off. That's not the solution. We'll never heal as a nation. We'll never move forward. And if we can't move forward, it won't be Donald Trump's fault. And it won't be Joe Biden's fault. It's going to be our fault if we cannot pledge to engage and to, you know, try as much as we can, even if we hate it to really hear the other people out and walk a mile in their shoes as much as we can. And then to engage them again and again and again and to never give up on them and to show them that we care enough about them that we will not give up on them. So, yeah, the left can be condescending or whatever, but, you know, uh, as Bill Maher says, stop being stupid, stop supporting stupidity. So the people on the right can't just act crazy and support a racist, fascistic, would-be tyrant and not expect to be condescended to. At the same time, like I said, we on the left have got to reach out to these people better. You know, the progressives have got to s take a step back and realize we actually do have to reach out to conservatives. We don't have the numbers on our own to just have the left run everything. We've got to reach people in the center, and we've got to make people on the right not feel like, you know, we don't care about them. So... We all need to try harder, all of us. But the most important thing now is we must get rid of this would-be tyrant fascist. He has got to go. He's clearly going to lose the election if it's a legitimately concluded election. And if anyone or anything tries to tinker with that, we must resist it as illegitimate. I don't care if it's a Supreme Court ruling or not. We cannot let them steal this election. We must resist and stand as much as possible whatever ruling that would disenfranchise people in the massive way that would have to be disenfranchised uh in order for trump to get back on top with the vote counts we cannot let that happen these were legally cast votes the idea that mail-in balloting isn't legal or is fraudulent is absurd so we've got to be prepared things could get really ugly here they're just starting to warm up now but they really could get ugly and this man you know, whether he walks out willingly or whether he gets escorted out by a mob at some point, who knows what's going to happen. But he has got to leave the office. He's not fit for it, and we can't stand for him in it. Anyway, nothing to worry about, folks. Just the fate of American democracy, democracy in the world, and Western civilization hang in the balance. Because let's face it, without America sticking up for democracies and without, uh, and again, we're not perfect, we're not pretending we have a perfect record. Some, we did some horrible stuff during the Cold War and did that a lot. But my point is, the times when we have been right, imagine if we weren't involved in these crises around the world. Imagine a Europe that allowed ethnic cleansing and, and genocide to happen twice, unrestricted in the Balkans, without us intervening, right? Imagine that. Imagine not trying to get UN forces into Somalia to prevent far more people from starving than did in the early 90s. And imagine not standing up to the Soviet Union and supporting the states of Eastern Europe to have their own democracies. So that's not a world that I would be happy to live in. So my point is, you know, um, if we cease being a beacon in the way that we did when we were under Trump, and I'm not saying we were always perfect before that. 
But if we cease to, to do that, if we cease being something special in history and just being special as an especially awful with some horrible, crazy, despotic person running our government, um, that's what I meant by saying we have to make sure we keep America worth saving, you know, so, um, and the hardest work isn't going to be getting him out, it's going to be coming together after, and we have to try, no matter how offended we were by Trump people, and no matter how offended they were by us, we have got to start being one nation again, so, anyway, thanks again for listening, and you can see the full article with all the links on my website, and I will certainly provide a link to that in the discussion, the comment section, or the description, I should say, on YouTube.